I'm so glad you're here because I want to show you how we found, gutted, and retrofitted this piano to fit our keyboard for our stage. It looks amazing. You can do this too for your stage and I want to show you how. Let's go. Welcome to Worship Leader Hangout. My name's Chad, and this guy behind me is Lester. Lester's the newest member of our worship team, but it didn't come easy. Lester was in desperate need of restoration, and I, th I think we did a pretty good job. I think we did. But I found Lester um, in a warehouse that belonged to a music production company uh, nearby, and they just, they were sitting on that thing for like six months, trying to give it away, trying to give it to churches, and then they just never came to pick it up, that kind of thing. I was like, dude, I will come pick that up myself and take it, what do I owe you? They said, nothing, nothing. It's free, we wanna give it to you um, to do this exact thing. And I just, I jumped on it right away. Well, thanks man. Man, anytime, I'll tell you, oddly enough, like it has been, I've tried to give that thing away to three people. Wow, are you and serious? You can't give like a legitimate upright piano away. That, again, it's not functional, but at the same time, like I could literally not give it away to somebody. Like people just were like, yeah, I'll take it, would never come get it. So I was, I was about to go take that thing to the dump. Cause it's crazy. I don't know where to put it, man. I mean, I just have nowhere to put it. So. Well, we're about to get it. Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad it's going to a good home. Your story may not be the same though. You might have to you know, look on Craigslist like I did for like three or four months. Look on Craigslist, try to find that perfect piano that needs this done to it. Um, uh, Craigslist, OfferUp, uh, Facebook, just look everywhere where things are sold or given away for pianos. People are trying to give them away. So just look for them. Um, you can find one. The main thing to look for is a short piano, one that you don't have to cut down and take the soundboard out if you don't want to. Those really tall upright pianos can be a hassle. Um, so definitely look for a short piano. They're all different shapes and sizes and this and that, but you're better off using a short piano in the long run. You can, like I said, you can keep the soundboard in there for aesthetic reasons, or you can take it out to make it lighter. It's just a lot easier to work with. Another thing to look for is the width between this edge and the other edge and ours is 52 and 3 8 inches so definitely look for one that's wide enough to fit your keyboard whatever kind of keyboard or controller you use make sure it fits it I actually got lucky by like a quarter of an inch or so because i didn't even measure my keyboard i didn't even think about it i was like ah it's a piano it'll fit <laughs> i just didn't think about it when it was all said and done we were about to put it on our stage i laid the keyboard in there i was like wow I'm glad this fits. So anyway, so think about that, look for that, measure your keyboard, measure the pianos when you go look at them before you pick them up. So gutting a piano doesn't come without a little bit of work. Now, we decided not to take the soundboard out for good reason. A, we would have to take all the strings off and to get to all the screws. There were like 20 something screws. Um, but also we like the way it looks. This is Jonathan. Jonathan has some experience yeah. in this. He actually uh, turned one into a desk for his house. He's done some other stuff too, so he's gonna be helping out. Yep. And we're just gonna get started and just get to work. All right. Get these clothes dirty. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. I have no idea where we're gonna start. Like these keys just come right out. <laughs> Unless I just broke it, which is totally fine. They come right out. They made it to do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
you gotta get your hands dirty, get in there, start pulling the keys up, taking pieces off, unscrewing things. I mean, you need to get this thing to where you can set your keyboard on a flat platform. Most pianos have a flat platform that all the keys and hammers and other things sit on. So once you get the keys off, just from what I'm saying, it's not like I've done this before, but once you get the keys off, you can see um, there is a platform, for lack of better words or terms, but we need to take all this extra stuff off the platform so that way we can lay our keyboard right here. There should be three so, or four screws holding it. Right. Go ahead and do that and I'll get those keys out of the way. Just uh, playing some Taylor Swift on Spotify, and it's in my head right now. So if you hear me just start singing some old classic Taylor Swift, you'll know why. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need that. Now what you could do, What's if up? you wanted everything to have the same type of finish, now in our case we're painting it so it doesn't matter, what you could do is take that board, now you have the same finished look for everything mm -hmm. if you were leaving the original finish. Once your keyboard is completely gutted, now you're ready to vacuum, sand, and paint, or refinish the wood. Refinishing the wood will require more sanding. We did this inside and it was a bad idea. If you're gonna sand it down to refinish it, take it outside because it is a mess and you start breathing in that stuff and it's just not good. You can see particles in the air floating around like haze. I mean, it's not, it's not a good thing to breathe in. But we just wanted to paint it black. I just sanded it down enough to where we can just brush it with a nice flat black paint to blend in with everything on the stage and it wouldn't stick out like a sore thumb. So once you're finished painting, you have the option to cover that with some kind of sealant or clear coat or whatever. We didn't. We kind of wanted that rustic look. It already had some broken edges and, and different things. I mean, even on this edge right here, you can see um, it's not perfect. And I'm okay with that because it is an old upright piano and that's the way it's supposed to look. We just painted it black to, to blend in with everything. But uh, so don't be afraid of some blemishes and things like that. I mean, this piece right here is like broken off. Um, so don't, don't be afraid of that. So now it's time to place and position your piano on the stage. What we decided to do was use a six inch platform to kind of lift it up a little bit, give it a little bit of height to match the drum booth on the other side. Uh, it balances out the stage so that way um, you can have the piano on one side, the drums on the other, or however your stage looks or whatever kind of instruments you use. Um, 
give good thought to where that piano is going to be positioned. Uh, we decided to angle ours very slightly to where if somebody still wanted to lead a song from the piano, it's still going to feel pretty natural. Um, as well as the pianist, if they are the MD, um, they can run a talkback mic and talk to the band and actually see them and look at them. Uh, but directly sideways, perpendicular to the stage, uh, it can look good, but most of the time with an upright piano, just go ahead and turn that very slightly. And it, in my opinion, it looks a lot better. Now it's time to put your rig inside of the piano. Uh, this is where you can get a little bit creative. If you're using a controller and a computer, you can actually use the piano bench if you were able to get that uh, to set your computer up on. Um, it just has a nice look if you use a different bench. Uh, at the piano. Also depending on the size of the piano, you can fit your computer or whatever inside there as well. There's just a lot of different things that you can do uh, to make this your own. I went ahead and set ours up to where we can use our keyboard, of course, with the local sounds, as well as RAN cables for using a controller to be able to put the computer on the piano bench beside the piano. Uh, that way if I want to run main stage or whatever, I can already be ready to do that. also ran an extra power cable um, that fits other pianos other than this one. So that way when our volunteers bring their pianos in, uh, they can, we can take ours out, put it on stand behind stage, and they can put theirs in and their power cable's already there. As well as I secured that power cable and other cables to the soundboard of the piano. Um, so that way when they are taken out and put back in, they don't have to reach down in there and fish for those that they're just right there to grab and put in their piano. I tried to think of little things that help them out. Your volunteers want things easy and uh, manageable, you know, if you're putting something like this on the stage and you've never had anything like this, uh, they might be a little nervous, but uh, if you make it a little easier for them and show them, hey, it's more like a stand, it's not, you don't have to use what we put in it, you can use your stuff, uh, I think it makes them feel better. So definitely think about those things as you're running your cables and running your power. Also run your power and your all, all your cables inside of the piano to where you can't see them. It just looks so much better. You can actually run your cables from the front, you know, the side that you play on, uh, underneath or over the top of the piece of wood that blocks you from actually getting to the soundboard. So uh, what I did was lift that piece of wood, that firewall, <laughs> for lack of a better word, I can't think of anything else. But anyway, I lifted that, put a couple bumpers on there the way it sits, um, maybe a little over a half inch above there so it can fit all the cables they ran out underneath and then to our power source or wherever those cables run. So there's some other way, you can drill holes and all those kinds of things too. I just decided not to um, and use what I had. You can actually see the a little bitty line and that's light coming through. I have a light inside the piano. Um, but this is the, uh, that's the, that's the space in between this wall and the bottom of the piano. And that's where we run all the cables in and out. I actually ran the foot pedal cable through the old uh, pedal holes that were already there. Again, one thing I might actually do is cut out a much larger space to fit the foot pedal inside. I didn't even really think about it in the process of making everything. So another thing, learn from, me, my mistake, eh, maybe a mistake, uh, to cut out a space for your foot pedal. Or lift the piano up a little bit, slide the foot, foot pedal underneath. You know, another thing I'm realizing too, my pedal situation. I love it. New challenges. We should have left the wheels on. <laughs> I hope this video has helped you learn how to gut and retrofit a piano and find one and all that. But most importantly, I hope you're inspired. I hope you're inspired to go find one yourself and put it on your stage. Maybe you've been thinking about this for a long time and you're just like, I just don't know where to start. Well, get online, look for a piano. That's where you start. I know you can do this. Your stage is gonna look awesome with your piano. You can paint it whatever colors you want. I mean, there's the sky's the limit with this thing. You can put LED lights in the back of it and make it match you know, your stage design and all that kind of stuff. But the main thing is that you're inspired to do something different. Get out there and make something happen that's uh, fun, creative, exciting uh, for your stage, for your team to do. I, I did have a lot of help with this and uh, the, it, it's become a character of our worship team. And this, he's a member of our worship team. If I asked anybody on our worship team 
who Lester is, they would say it's the piano on our stage. The dude's a beast. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you next time. Remember, great worship leaders are always learning. Have a great day.